right, so we're going to focus on doing this for this episode. Is that what you've agreed upon? Yes. Do you need something? Is it going to bother you that on the tiktok one, like I'm... Oh, never mind. I fixed it. You're going to do what you're going to do, Pilar. <laughs> it, I'm not, that's not negative. Sorry. Okay. I apologize for the way I said it and Thank sounded. You. That was... Thank you. I appreciate that. I apologize that. for having a monotone voice. No, no. I'm saying that from the perspective of, um, no, no, no. You on that frame, whenever you're moving, I can't change the way I talk. I'm sorry. Uh, but no, Noah was doing the same thing. Like he was moving a bit. And then like, if you move like the way you kind of were turned and talking to me, yeah. like I just, you see this, I'm just like sliding it left mm. and right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had this voice since you met me. I know. I know. I know how it sounded. It was very deadpan matter of fact monotone but i was just saying like me i was just kind of i feel like mine was very much like a i talk and like the words to me to me are like the response on like a uh scanner of like life and death and it's just beep <laughs> so it's not there's neither nor it's so neutral it's not there's no positive or negative it's right in the middle but this then man said Life and death. <laughs> no, it's not in between life and death. That's just death. Okay, well then, whatever whatever neutral is. I don't know. Someone was talking to me last night and was like, that's your natural voice. And I'm like, yeah. What do you mean your natural voice? They just thought I was like, they're like, that's just what your voice sounds like. I'm like, yeah, that's my voice. I've had people say that because they're like, you got a great voice. I had three people talking about my voice last night. Well, yeah, you do have a great voice. We've talked about that a billion times. Yeah, one of my homies, we were just chopping it up. And he was like, sidebar, I just want to let you know, you got a great voice. And I was like, thank you. I've heard that my entire life. Yeah. And I've whole, I've heard so many people say you have a voice for radio. Yes. And I, and I, oh, my God. And all I ever say is, do you have a job for radio? Because I have no idea how to get in. <laughs> like, wait, I have no idea how to break wait, in. Can you say, like, do like a late night radio jam thing? Yeah, you know I can do that. No, like right now. Right now? Yeah, like right now. Coming to you on the ones no, and... No, 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 just with your regular voice, not trying to oh, be. Oh, oh. Coming to you on the ones and twos, it's J.D. Witherspoon and Pilar Teaspoon. And we are here to give you the Talking Teaspoon podcast. Is that Talking Teaspoons? That's going to be our intro. Hey, y'all. What's up? Welcome oh back. Oh, my God. You. Welcome Ooh. back. Welcome Hi. back. Oh, yeah. Um, I never know where to look. Look at me. Look into my eyes. <laughs> you said looking. See now why? <laughs> so now why? But why are you looking like that? Now you're looking at me the way I talk. <laughs> you looking at me with the way I fucking talk. What the fuck was that, huh? You supposed to look at me with some mystique, some romance, but no, you looked at me like, who is this? Who is this nigga? <laughs> she on the floor right now, y'all. Oh my God, we're back with a new episode, baby, and today <laughs> she's on the floor. I don't have. <laughs> Can I aim the? I'm not changing the angle of the camera. That's too much work. Pilar, get please come back. I gotta shut up. <laughs> I just got footage of your chair right now. What is that noise? Oh, that's my fault? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Alar. Okay, girl, I see you with that arch back there. All right, yeah. Put a hump in your back and shake your rump. Put a hump in your back. You over there for the 992,000 right now? <laughs> Look at her on the floor. <laughs> what the fuck? What was All right, so hey y'all, welcome back to a new episode of Talking Teaspoons. <laughs> I, I'm doing the podcast at this point. You got to figure it out down there. Oh, I know. This is why you weren't on the phone for hours with your friends. Your <laughs> eyes are watering. No shit, because I was dying laughing. Obviously. Yo, this is so funny. <laughs> I need your audio. They need to know. They need to. When L and I are laughing our asses off, and one of us has said the. F Don't! <laughs> it's enough. I'm loud enough. They can fucking hear it. All right? All right. Please. 
listen, for the uh. third and final time. Yeah, I don't want to laugh too hard because it gives me headaches. So, like, yeah. When Elle and I are on the phone and we're laughing so hard because the other one made us laugh, we will literally start saying, shut up, shut up, shut up, stop talking because we're trying to catch our fucking breath because we can't breathe. And everything that person says after that is inherently funny. And then we're like, one of us is driving or whatever. So, like, if I'm saying shut up, it's not a personal thing. It's please just, just be quiet for a second so I can try to gather myself because Everything sounds funny right now. I'm hearing that. Oh, that hold on. Stay where you are. Oh, I needed to get you on the double cam down there on the floor. You're good. You can come back. You can come back. I should triple check and make sure this footage was very funny. Writes the jokes, kids. Let me tell you. I write, write the, jokes. the jokes. Yeah. Oh, the titties swell out. Just <laughs> have mercy. Find your find your find your place. Lady. Find your center. Well, you no, said no, you no, said I'm, I'm me only, find it. It was because my mine was being pushed towards me. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to do anything. Mm -hmm. I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to do nothing. He said, "Find your center." I'm kidding. I, I first off, honestly, just didn't know. What you, I thought you were DJing just now. I thought you were scratching. Um, okay. So. Welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back. Give me uno momento. I want to triple check and make sure that our. God, what's it called is working. <laughs> no, we still live. Don't stop talking. That thing. It's juicy. That was, hey. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the camera? Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. It was working. All right, we're gonna go back and wow, guys. JD, sync it up here. Three, two, one. Woo! Synced up. All right, plug it. Get off your phone, man. <laughs> Let's... Well, you're not even ready. I know you're not talking. I'm not ready. I know. We're not doing this. Let's talk there's about two different, There's Let's two, talk di about there's two different about. versions of getting ready. Woo, we're not doing There's this. getting production ready, and then there's getting ready, ready in the house and no. living, leaving sure. the house. Sure. Yes, yeah. yes, I mm -hmm. agree with you. Yeah. I have a better time of doing this version mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not really. Well, I don't know. I guess I was taking my sweet time trying to get everything centered. And then, whatever. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's, what? I'm saying it's not. You, you're more than likely right about what you're saying. Is what I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Hey, y'all. So today we were going to do a little side quest story thing. Um, we got these. I bought this. It's this thing called Tales. Uh, shout out to TikTok before it gets banned. I saw this on TikTok. It was like a little life interview kit, and it's all about interviewing your loved ones and people that you enjoy and appreciate. It's more of like one of those things where you interview kind of like your elders because they're the ones who have a lot of stories to tell. But since we're here and we don't have any really new voice messages this week, speaking of which, send us some voice messages. Please. We we would appreciate it. I love them so much. If you send us voice messages to the <clears> link <throat> tree in whichever bio uh, for Talking Teaspoons specifically, not for all the other ones. There's there's just for this one. Um, then you'll be able to send us voice messages and we can have conversations with y'all about topics that maybe you want to hear about or questions that you have about, uh, I don't know, personal life relationships, uh, questions about mental health. Anything you want to talk about is up on the table. So we just have to, I think, keep making the content and keep engaging with y'all and posting it on all the socials, which is tough to get done, but we're going to get it going. All right. So, honey, today we're going to pull a few cards and I guess just ask a few questions and maybe they'll make sense for where we are in life right now and maybe they won't. I don't know. Um... And some of them, if we don't want to talk about it, we don't have to. Duh. Yeah, I don't know. Because, like, some of them is, like, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, do you want to pull the first one? And should I, I, Maybe it's a question. No, no, pull the question. But I was going to say we can both answer it. Unless you want to just ask in particular. Hmm. Oh, God. It's a midlife question. Yeah. What's your favorite story from... 
Oh, wait. Actually, this doesn't apply to me. I thought it said from when you were a kid as a teenager, but when your kids were teenagers, don't have those. Right. And yeah. Dre is a teenager now, so. Yeah. Some of the questions are going to be like, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be, you know, middle, there'll be questions for people. Who, so the three sections are early, early life, mid, mid, and reflection. Right, well. And I'll put all the questions we don't answer at the back. We and some we might not even be far enough along. Oh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> what is it? Is it tough? <laughs> uh oh. What is the most important thing you learned from your mother or father? And <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them's dead. The other one I don't talk to, but I have learned a lot from them goofies. So you know. Ditto. Uh, <laughs> we'll death be death in jail. All right. All right. Well, let me. Can I see it back, please? Yeah. This is the most important thing. Okay, I'll go. I'll answer for my mom and my dad. The most important thing that I learned from my mom. Mm. M- may I do one thing? What? The mic is just covering your mouth. I just don't want it covering your mouth. If that's okay. What if I want it covering my mouth? Then I guess you just then do it. You want? I'm kidding, but I was I, like, want to know. Okay. Um. All right. Most important thing I learned from my mom. Ciao. Um. (laughs) No, I learned things. I'm just trying not to. I'm. 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 Wait, you want me that? to go first? No, what's that TikTok sound? I'm finding it. I'm finding it. It takes that long. It does. It does. Oh, for sure. Um. All right. The first thing that like I or like things the thing that keeps playing in my head is she said a quote to me when I was in high school. Um, and the older I get, the more and more I'm like, oh, girl, you ate that. Like you ate that up, which is beauty fades, but dumb is forever. Like, like, and it applies to, I feel like so many things in life. Cause I I think the first time I heard her say that I was like, I don't know if I was talking, I don't think I was talking about a boy, but like, I don't know, something came up and she was like, Pilar, something you have to remember in this life is beauty fades, but dumb is forever. She's like, you may not always look this, look this way, but if you're smart, you'll be smart forever. Like you'll always have that. Like, that's not something that's, that's what it was. She's like, that's not, knowledge is something that no one can take from you. She's like, you can get in a car accident and look crazy. She's like, you can just age. Right. You can just age. She's like, but being dumb, she's like, you could think some guy is hot and just be like, oh my God, he's so great, so sexy. She's like, that man could be a fucking idiot. And then what you gonna do? That's forever, girl. That's not gonna change. And I was like, oh. And then the older I get, the more I'm like, oh, 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 damn. All right. I thought, because I was naive. I thought, oh, my God, people get older. They much. No, they don't. No, they don't. They get older. That is crazy, isn't it? They do not fucking mature. There's no guarantee that, like, you guys are going to. No. No. And then the most important thing I learned from my dad, I would say, I mean, there's there's a lot. <laughs> always keep your fucking oil changed <laughs> no matter what you do with your car it does not matter he didn't care about anything else as long as you keep your oil changed obviously brakes too but oil is a, a bigger thing um always keep your oil changed and check your oil regularly um uh oh whenever you move to a new city the first things you need to look for is a good dry cleaner and tailor um like if you're looking even to move into a new neighborhood, he would always be like, how far is the, how far is the dry cleaner? <laughs> did, did you find like, did you find a dry clean? Like you, you need a dry cleaner. And I'd be like, dad, I'm broke. I don't have anything to dry clean. He's like, listen, you need a dry cleaner. <laughs> you never know. So I, a dry cleaner, a lawyer and a doctor. So those are the things I look for. And then I think the most important thing, because those things are kind of superficial ish, um, is it takes time to get to know people and power is silent those like like for real for real like life life shit the greatest things my father ever said to me was it takes time to get to know people because i was i'm an only child and 
I, you know, I don't think my dad knew how to say it to me, but I think he recognized that I had like insecurities as a kid. Um, and I think sometimes, again, he didn't know how to say it, but he would hear from my mom or me about my friends or in high school and issues and things like that. And so as like the older I got, the more he would be like, hey, it takes time to get to know people like they they may seem great right now. And I had this like in 2013, I had this huge purge of just like just getting a bunch of people out of my life. And from that point on, because I told him about it and he was like, you know, it sucks and I'm sorry, but, you know, it takes time to get to know people from then on. I would just be like, yeah, I met this person and they seem cool, um, you know, for now, so far. And he would be like, exactly. And, um, you know, it's not to say that if you take forever, you know, to get to know someone that they're not going to disappoint you or hurt you. But it mitigates the risk by by quite a lot. And it helps you or at least it helps me, has helped me, especially now that I'm, you know, not insecure and have all the the previous issues just driving me crazy like they used to. Um, it really helps you kind of, or it helps to just kind of see things for what they are. Like this person is new. They're cool. You, maybe you're catching a vibe, but you don't fucking know them. They don't know you. They don't need to know all your business. Mm -hmm. You like, you can keep it very like, like chill. And then over time, let them show you who they are. Cause people will always tell on themselves. Um, and then what it what what did I say? He said uh silences. Oh, power silent. Power my dad grew up in a tiny Italian town and uh this is gonna sound so weird. I it, my dad my dad used to fuck with the mob. Straight up. Like my dad in Cleveland, he worked in construction. If you fucking know, you know. Okay. Um and he grew up around Italian people and he loved the culture and um, he very much was like power is silent. And I think he learned that from growing up around those people and, and working in construction um, in Cleveland and the mayor. And like there's a lot of like, you know, back scratching and handshaking and like, you know, schmoozy shit you got to do with city officials um, and non city officials to get things done and you, he realized um and i think even like robert green talks about this in the 48 laws of power i haven't read it but i've heard some of the laws um if you are t if you're talking a lot it, it gives it gives off this kind of air of weakness like you mm. need to be seen you need to be validated you you don't know as much as you are pretending like you do but a motherfucker that's quiet they have nothing to prove so it's like, oh, I'm going to let everybody do what they're going to do. And then when you're quiet, you can listen and you can pay attention and see what is like actually going on. And so, um, yeah, like power is silent. So I try to listen more than I speak and just kind of like suss out the vibe. And if someone's like, oh, yeah, I'm this, I'm that. Great. I love that for you. But, you know, sure. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm always like, who's the check cutter? I don't want to talk to the person who's blowing smoke out there. I don't care about that. Where's the person that cuts the check? Because they're quiet and I need to figure out who that is because that's who you need to be talking to. Perfect example. Suicide Squad. Uh, the, the First one or the second one? The Will Smith one. Okay. So first one. So when Will Smith dead shot. Yeah. One shot. Hot shot. Dead shot. Yeah. I think, black I shot. I think that's right. Yeah. Dead shot. I think that's, <laughs> yeah. I could be wrong. I don't know. She knew it. <laughs> Um, but in the scene, he's like in jail and they're like, here, you know, he's auditioning, right? For his little, you're going to be a part of the Suicide Squad. And he's, um, just finished shooting all the things up. Doesn't miss a, doesn't miss a single one. And he starts just listing off the things that he wants. Like my daughter's going to go to college. She's not going to pay for it. Da, 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 da. And <clears throat> the guy from Altered Carbon and RoboCop mm -hmm. was like, yeah, none of that's none of that's fucking happening, bro. Like, you're not getting that. And he goes, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to your boss, uh, Aaron Boy, and it, and his boss is Viola <laughs> Davis, and she's just standing there. And that, is, that is the perfect example of power is silent because even when Will Smith was going to pick up the guns, the guy was explaining everything, blah, 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 blah. If you're running the show 
you're surely not doing that. So at that point, he already knew, oh, you're not the person I need to be fucking with for real. It's her. Because mm. she's the only one just standing here, just watching. Everybody else has got something to do. Everybody else is either making sure I don't fucking kill you or any of them. And then you're over here just, well, this is what you're going to do. And this is what we need you to do. And she's just stone cold killer. Yeah. That is a perfect definition, an example of power of silence. So now your turn, because I've just rambled. No, you're good. <laughs> those, are, those were good. Those shout were... out to my dad. Yeah, shout out to Papa. Mr. Michael. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what is the most important thing you've learned from your mother or father? <laughs> oh, sorry, something just came to my head from your dad. What? You can say it. Oh, JD, don't be cheap, brother. Don't be cheap. A don't salad. Be, don't a be, salad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? We went out to. We were going to go to Cheesecake. We had stopped by the house first. Yeah. And we, I think I was like in like a sundress or something nice. And he was like, take her somewhere. And he was like, what are y'all about to do? And you said, I think one of us or you said cheesecake. And he, you were like, he was like, oh, JD, please don't be cheap. Oh, please, please. <laughs> what are you going to get? And I think because you like the factory chopped salad. Yeah, and I think I you like. said that. And I and you were like, she likes the cob. And he was like, oh, JD, please, brother, a salad, a salad. <laughs> don't be cheap. Don't be cheap. That shit was so fucking funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. He was he was uh, he was predicting the anti cheesecake factory movement i guess low-key yeah because you didn't see his ass in, a, in the cheesecake fucking factory yeah right he took us there all the time oh really i didn't he know that I mean, I mean for like birthdays and I shit we know, go i to, did not he know think that he act like he too good for cheesecake yeah right <laughs> i didn't know that no but i think oh. may, maybe we were just coming from somewhere looking nice or maybe you were looking more nice than me i don't know Do you remember but. that time i wore that black um we were i think we were going to phil and Lindsay's way back in the day i wore this black i still have it uh sundress it was like it was tight and it went to the floor yeah and it had like the little sheer panels and he, your dad was just like where where are you going mm. are you going to a ball you're wearing a ball gown i was like john this is a sundress and go jd where are you taking her where, where y'all going? Y'all going to a wedding? Why she all dressed up? You all dressed up. And I'm like, I should do. This is like a casual fit. And he was just Not like. for him. Yeah, he was like, it's a ball gown. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about right now? There was now? a lot of stuff that you did that he couldn't wrap his head around. I know, around. it was hilarious. He couldn't wrap his head around the fact that you actually were interested in getting to know who he was as a person. Yeah. Then there's also the fact that in wanting to get to know him, you didn't know any of his movies. <laughs> like, <laughs> like. Not that you didn't know him, you were you were definitely aware of who he was, like whatever. But you yeah. were just like, yeah, no, I've seen some of them. I haven't seen all of them. I think I'd only seen like ten percent of the catalog, right? And it's, if and that's being so generous. But it's not like you didn't see it because you were unaware of who he was. Yeah, no, you just had different tastes yeah, and stuff. Watching and different st shit. You were watching different stuff coming up, and he, <laughs> I remember him like losing not losing his mind i remember him kind of oh, yeah. not being able to wrap his <laughs> head <laughs> just not being able to wrap his head around the fact that you haven't seen like cult classics yeah, no. and you had seen like the first friday and i think you had seen friday I'd after seen next. all three fridays oh, sorry. i had seen all three you sorry. do this every time i but okay well maybe okay i'm i guess i'm like uh, my mom's not white I'm shout hit, out to I'm, shannon I'm, sharp <laughs> i'm hitting you with the amanda <laughs> seals takes right you now are. no okay well you Made it seem as if I they couldn't quote them. You couldn't quote them, but regardless of quoting them, which even even that was probably taken aback. You can't quote Fri them Friday movies. Do you remember we were sitting at the table and he slapped the table? He was like, John <laughs> David, what is she? Is she serious? What do you mean? Because oh oh, that's what made him do. I hadn't. I he said Vampire in Brooklyn, and I was like, I've never seen that movie. He was like, John David, what is she talking about? <laughs> and I was like, I've never. I don't know who's in it. And he, you were like, or he was like. He hasn't met befuddled. He hasn't met black people who don't know who he is like that. Well, he met me. Yeah, like you knew who he was, but you were just like, I'm not no super fan. Like, nice to meet you. Yeah, I don't. You know, which I was like, yeah. Like, that's... who are you as a person, sir? Yeah, and Think I was like, and I was like, and I try. I remember, I, I was like, Dad, you ain't special. <laughs> he was just, oh, he. But he no, especially. But it like made him laugh because he was like, what the fuck? I think it's because for him, his life has been so ass backwards for so long yeah. it's, he's been yeah. famous more than he hasn't been 1000 percent. so 1000 percent. to introduce someone new to the house and 
not like you got to fan out more just he it was something it was an experience that he had not had in in decades in a long time in a very long time there's only i mean depending on where he goes there are people who didn't know who he was like i i have friends who like will look at photos and be like eh, i think i know who that is mm -hmm. you know uh most of them aren't black <laughs> but uh, but also when that happened, we'd been dating for a couple of years, so I think it, he kind of, like I'm just, anyone would kind of assume that like you thought you did your research, <laughs> not research, but like that maybe it would have come up or I would have wanted to to look at them or something like that, and and I was just like no, yeah, he's well because you were just interested in getting to know him, the person, yeah, and he he was like why, and I was like you're right here, I don't care what you do, and he was just like oh please, Pila, Pila, please, <laughs> and I was like John, I don't like. <laughs> I've learned more about you sitting at a table having wine than I ever would watching you play someone you aren't. Play a character, yeah. Like, yeah. and he was just like, oh, please. There's only so many people who know him that well. So I guess yeah. the, for him, I don't think, I don't know. I think uh, also if we're comparing it to experiences of me having friends over in the sure, past. Sure, sure, then sure. Then friends in the past, because I remember people would do double takes if he walked past, because <laughs> I wouldn't bring up who he was really to many right. people. Or they would only like these kind of friends would maybe see him pick me up from school when I, I was younger. This random like celebrity is just like walking around. Your house. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's exactly how it was. That's exactly like how it was. Like some famous person just strolled in off the street. Yeah, and then friends. <laughs> that's what happens in nice neighborhoods. Celebrities just break into your house and randomly walk through. You never know who it's gonna be. It could be Beyonce. It could be Dwayne Wade. Today it's John Witherspoon. You think that that's like you. The funny thing is, you're talking about like um, me and Gabe were going back and forth talking about like that's just how our childhood was. Well, yeah, because you guys are both children of someone who, you know, yeah. has notoriety. Yeah. Like he was telling me how like Ken Griffey Jr. was at his house. Just the, whoa. Just hanging out. That's hilarious. Yeah. Like you and got a box of Wheaties in your house. That's crazy. That is just crazy. Just walking around. Hey. And then I remember I came over to the house one day and a, uh, Eddie Murphy was just sitting in the living room. Yeah. Uh. I'm just saying, I know you, uh, you're not a big fan or something, I, or you don't know. I don't know his he's background. He's cool. He's never moved me, but his security and all that they were doing at that SNL after party was so crazy. I forget. It, it only... was so it was so wild. I was like, I literally said, and that man heard me. I said, nobody cares about Eddie Murphy, least of all me. Move. I'm trying to get to the margaritas. It's an open bar. And they're playing my song. Move. Move. And that is the same. <laughs> and, that, and, and that type of behavior, that, that, that specific energy is what my dad was like. What is she talking? You can't talk? walk up the stairs. Get what? the fuck out of my way. This is Budokan, nigga. Are you serious? Move. He wasn't rude, was he? His security. Well, there's security. I know, but he... Oh, scary ass. Nigga, it's 11.30 at night. No, not even. It was it's, two. No, it was no. It was like one because I was a little lit at this point. It's like one o'clock in the morning. You walking into a fucking club in New York City. If you've ever been to Budokan, you know the stairs that I'm talking about. You got sunglasses darker than Blade on. Can't even see. Get the fuck out of here. Your security should be concerned that you're going to tip, tap, tumble down the fucking stairs. Not me dancing, shimmying, not even looking at you. Okay, I'm looking at the bar. I am trying to get upstairs. And it's, hey, hey, hey. Like, they had, JD, they the, had to come to my side of the stairs to be like, you can't walk up here. Get the fuck out of my way. Come on, it's New York City. You think Eddie Murphy is the hottest nigga in here? Are you serious? I mean, he, for, of, of that, because it wasn't a Budokan party night. No, it, it was, was the SNL after party. In that room, at that night, he was supposed to be the hottest dude in the room. Not to you, okay, obviously. Okay. Well, not to you. To the people who were there because it was his comeback episode. I'm yeah, not saying that that's that, how it was at the studio, at the club that, after but party. They, but uh, it's not a club after party. They're, they remember they're shutting down the club for... Sure. Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. I, sure. hear, I hear what you're but saying. But like, he came down the stairs and nobody cared. That's what I'm saying. And not and this is listen, this is no shade, no tea on Eddie Murphy. I am not discounting the fact that he has opened doors for many black comedians and actors. I am not shaming or shitting on this man's career at all. That's not what I'm trying to say here. I want to make that very clear because I know I can be very cunty. Hey. But <laughs> Okay. But there were like when he was coming down the stairs, it wasn't as if people were waiting with breath that was baited for Eddie Murphy to come to this party. Was everybody super excited like for the episode? And uh, yeah, you could feel it in the room. 
But at that party, first of all, you come in way later. Everybody fucked up. It's New York. Everybody fucked up. Lizzo's having a good time. A whole bunch of other people are having a good time. Nobody was tripping is what I'm saying. Like his secure, again, I am making sure because I am, I have two more than two brain cells up here. I saw him coming down the stairs and I was like, when I see stuff like that, I'm like, let me get out of the way. Let me make myself small as possible. So I'm, you know me, the same way I was dancing, looking through those jeans, child. I was empty glass because she needs a refill. Going up the stairs, minding my business. Here comes security. And you got to get the fuck off of me. So I wasn't you're, even looking at you. You're reacting to the security. I'm reacting to the security, but also like Eddie Murphy being scary. His security had to walk away from him to say something to me. And he was like, sir, but it wasn't, can you see me in them glasses? You're saying like, was his behavior giving off that type of energy? Like I have entered the room. Cause that's what you sound like you're saying. No, I, think, you, I mean, I think most celebrities at his level exude that, but not always in a cunty way. And I'm not saying he was cunty. I'm just saying that it was a, it was an over exaggerated moment that just was like, you guys calm it, calm it down. Like there are, it, it just, it was never that, it was never that deep. Yeah. That's how all security usually acts. I was just at a, or well, not all, but I was just at a thing where a security was pressing me for five bucks cover charge. And I was like, You're, yeah. and I was like, you want $5 for me to stand in a room? And they were like, it's $5, my man. It was come after we did the comedy shows recently in Weird. Covina. And I was just like, okay. Cause any, but my, but. I wasn't trying to take away from your story. I was no, trying. I, 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 was, I, know. I was trying to say that the behavior of the the security who is like I'm protecting Eddie Murphy and the and the security guard who's standing in front of this building who thinks you know waving that energy and power around like I, I am I am the Sultan who can say who does and doesn't pass this part of the world. Listen, <laughs> so, the only security that can get fucking crazy with me is Julius. That's it. Yeah, you're Beyonce, and, and that's justified because mm. like. People are fucking crazy. But other than that, like, please. Yeah. Like, I don't care. It's just like, Eddie Murphy. Okay, and moving did on. He, did they stop you or something? Like, I don't remember. Uh, was I there? Yeah, they tried to keep me. No, you were. Um, was I downstairs in you that You were downstairs, bar? but in that back bar room already. Okay. You were like, because you were you were there with your friends. And I was like, I'm going to make myself scarce and have my fun time dancing in New York. Because you were there to schmooze and talk to people and do the thing. It was the, you can't come up the stairs. Well, I'm halfway up this motherfucker, so now what we gonna do? Yeah, while we're coming down. I'm gonna turn her, get the, like, you, they they inserted themselves into my little bubble where it, like, your security, you're seeing what's going on. If you can't see that a half tipsy girl minding her own business, more concerned about getting up the stairs than what's going on over here, and also, there was more than one security guard. None of you noticed that I saw that man and then kept going and did not care. You reached over to make it something like, get down the stairs and make sure this old man doesn't break a fucking hip. Why don't you? Yeah, that's Hollywood hierarchy at its finest. I think that's, you know, and people being around it, they, they're, <clears throat> first off, they're living in a fear-based environment, which is entertainment. And sure. if you're not the entertainer, then you're afraid of, or excuse me, if you're not a higher power or the entertainer, then you're thinking, oh, well, I, I need to do my job to the utmost, you know, they think they, they think they're going above and beyond doing that, that bullshit. So, yeah, that's so stupid. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you weren't pressed. You were like, let me get my drink. <laughs> the same way. Oh, like when we were at the big three with your dad. Yeah, I got footage of that never uploaded. It's on my hard drive. Yeah, and like and we were going up the stairs and everybody was freaking out. And I left y'all because I was like, he'll be fine with JD. I want the snacks. Like I was I was waiting for halftime to get the nachos oh and then every every like four steps it was oh my god pots, jar, eh, eh, eh. and i was like fuck y'all niggas i want food i gotta go like well, he's yeah. used to this i don't like this this is fucking weird to me and you're like oh it's not that big of a deal and i'm like then you stay with your daddy i'm gone <laughs> i'm hungry <laughs> that's i <laughs> like, mean that's yeah that's fuck? those those are fans that is fame that's how they behave they see you as a monolith and they want to they want to they want to say hi they because for them, this may be the first and or last time they ever see you. So I might as well take advantage and also definitely um, uh, dive into your personal space and not give a shit. That's just how unfortunately it is. That's the name Such of the game. Yeah. 
or smoking. It's even it's even more prevalent now with parasocial relationships. It's so much different. You know, it's it's because now we're it's not like you just saw me on TV or in a movie. You get to see me every single day. I want to post anything on the internet. Right. So Yeah, it's it's a fascinating thing. I I want to go back and look at that footage of the um big three that I never posted and see what that vlog was looking like. It was an interesting day. It was a nice day. Yeah, but no, it's funny fun. for for you. It's oh my god, eye opening to me. I'm just like, yeah, this has been like the last twenty something years. Yeah, like, I'm super. I dope. was like, that's horrible. Oh, because we were walking to the fucking car. At TMZ. Hey, John, and I was like, get away. And you <laughs> and your dad. Your dad was like, oh, Pilar, please. And you were like, Pilar, no, it's fine. And I was like, no, that, can we just walk to the car? He's not normal. He's not a normal person to no, people. It's not even about that. It wasn't even like a. Hey, can I ask you a couple of questions? No, 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 it was no. just, hey, John, da, 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 da. and I'm just like, fuck off. And I'm like, and I always in those situations, I'm like, I'm not famous. No one knows who the fuck I am. Y'all could literally be like, I don't, we don't know this bitch. She followed us out of the fucking venue. She's crazy. Uh, you know, like, so I was just like, I have no problem being the villain and being like, yo, I get it. This is your job. I've had friends who worked for fucking TMZ back in the day. But guess what? You're being fucking weird. Like, fuck off. Yeah, I guess it's, I mean. Because he's not getting paid for it. It's just like some random like street shit. Like, get the fuck out of here. Can the man walk to his goddamn car? Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Well, no, it's, it does, I mean, I hear exactly what you're saying. My like, you just came out of an arena. You mean to tell me you don't think people were bombarding him? Take you and your little sad fucking camera and talk to somebody else. But that's so funny that you would think that that's even an option i don't think that it's an option i think more than anything i wish it was an option and i i mean we saw this with with his funeral i i am not i don't do well when people treat others and dismiss their humanity i don't like it it drives me crazy and again to to look at someone as an object as a monolith it's disturbing to me and i i i and i i don't like it because I feel like the person that's receiving that almost like loses a piece of their humanity in those moments. And I just, I, I look, it feels like an injustice to me. I just, I, I, I don't like it. It drives me nuts. I hear that. But is it, is it on you to act on their behalf or should they be able to experience that themselves and deal with it the way that they deal with it? Cause I, I have days where like I might come across somebody who recognizes me and I mean, you don't have to play, you know, tackle or linebacker for me but i know that you sometimes clock it and see it but, yeah but like yeah i mean if anything i think the way that i think my dad looked at it like is the longer we don't acknowledge it the more it'll we'll have to wait to even get farther away from doing this we might as well just get it out of the way and move on with our day because and also i think he might have known the tmz dude i think he did because that's the thing he knows those guys because you're talking about coming out of an arena that had an event going on they're always out there he that's way more that's way less personal than when he's just leaving the airport or getting to the airport that's every single time he goes on the road and then they catch a hot they get a hot take of him saying something wild that he shouldn't have said about something in the news but he's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting my bags. How are you, man? What's going on? Let me, uh, what's up? Oh, John, how do you feel about what's the name or something? And then it's like, cool, there's, there's a little thing. You got your job. And I think my dad also kind of looks at it as people doing their job. Yeah. And him, him like being like, oh, well, you know, I, that guy's doing a job. I'm not, him specifically, he's not in any type of gossip or drama. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, you want to chop it up for a few minutes? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. What's up? What's going on? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you see some celebrities who do it i understand the ones that get bombarded all the time yeah that's different my dad doesn't have that he didn't have that same level of paparazzi pulling up on him yeah they would find him in certain cities and maybe take a photo and maybe say hi but it wasn't like how Bieber's getting harassed no. ever since. No, oh my God, no. That's a completely no, different, or no, Kanye. No, 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 like no, no. When, not even close, not no. even, yeah, no. And when they're going through it, no, it's genuinely like, oh, you are a disruption to my life. Sure. Yeah. I just. But I do hear what you're saying. I don't know, I just. I, I think also because then I was I was probably thinking of, you know, your dad came up in a time where, especially as a black man, saying no really wasn't an option. And so sometimes I felt like people, I don't know, sometimes it just really felt like he did things because, like, did something like that because it was his job. But I just, I guess it bothered me that 
in those moments I felt like he never considered like that he could say no and if he didn't want to have to turn it on or do whatever you know that like he could just keep walking or not answer I don't know it was just there was just nah. there's just something about it that I don't know and I don't I don't want to start crying um you're good I was gonna yeah. say if you don't mind me interjecting is it's one thing if because he was good at saying no to people he could say no to I feel like I kind of empathize with him where I don't want to say no to the people who really like me, who mm -hmm. really enjoy me. I'm fine with saying no to a bad offer mm -hmm. or somebody who wants me to do some cheap ass work or a higher up who's taking advantage of me. But, you know, I think my dad had a very. I, I'm not going to say he had a I mean, maybe he did have a close knit relationship with his fans because he got to see them every other week in different cities and do his meet and greets and sell his merchandise. And I know from what he would say to me is like because I, I remember I've had moments where I tried to tell him like, oh, dad, we ain't got to do this right now. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, J.D., J.D., J.D. He's like, these people love me. And you don't realize that they might have the hardest lives going on right now. And if my old crusty ass can give them a little <laughs> bit of give them a little bit of uh you know happiness in this moment then he usually would do it I, I know there were definitely times where he would maybe be hard pressed by too many people and it's like oh hey there's you know too many mm -hmm. of y'all you know let's either let's try to do a group photo or get some quick yeah. quick snapshots i gotta go but yeah that's um i mean there's some people who definitely come in with malice who are trying to take advantage of celebrities and and be fans of them and you know some guys some people will like uh try to pawn off your your signature or mm -hmm. do stuff like that but then there's the the few or maybe the majority of people who genuinely just love you for who you are and they are just so excited to see you and um i think i think about that from the perspective of like you know like I, I like someone someone asked me, I think, on one of my audio messages, and I haven't answered this one yet, but someone said, Do you ever feel a type of way uh about people who like say that your dad was their dad growing up? And I tell them, I think I think when he first passed away, yeah, I yeah. I, I was a little Yeah. I think it was just kinda like, All right, y'all, I get it. <laughs> it's in such poor taste. It's well, it's in such poor taste at that time. Yeah. Well, it's one thing where it is and it isn't. I, it's in such poor taste. It's it's in such poor taste if you're trying to tell me that like just be like if you're trying to almost like a uh, big dog me on on yeah. ma on matter of facting that he was as important to you as he was to and me and like they're as sad and as like hurt as you yeah I'm not here to compare grief I I because I'm you, you can't do it so but nowadays I kind of look at it like oh you know that is kind of not necessarily sad, but if that's what they felt, if sure. their parent left the house and if they grew up watching a TV show and he represented a version of what he, you know, people yeah. at home thought could be a father to them, then yeah, good. Go for it. You know, whatever. I, I ain't got to listen to every comment on my social media. Mm -hmm. I can hit the mute button on people who are going out of their way or who are saying something that I'm just like, yeah, okay. And just, you know, restrict, mute, block, whatever it is, uh, if they're being disrespectful. But I, I do remember one time I think telling my dad I was like dad let's let's get out of here man you you they they gonna be hounding you he's like oh JD let, let him have it because because he very much felt like you know if he would have had someone who would have done that for him when he was coming up you know that you you never know how much that would have made the world for him so he looks at it like yeah man everybody loves me I think you I think there was a video of us recording him when we were at the house or something a vlog. Um, Everybody and, loves pop. Yeah. So, you know, that's just, that's just, it just is what it is. And, you know, I'm happy for him and I'm glad because you got to also think about it from the fact that there's not a lot of people who have that type of long lasting impact on people. Mm -hmm. There's other famous people where you don't look at them like that. You know, mm -hmm. like I, yeah. there's, there's some celebrities where I sit back and I'm just like, oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I was, I'm a fan of them, mm -hmm. but I don't have what feels like an emotional no connection, connection to them. To them yeah. And if you're watching someone who's playing a father on TV for a good, you know, <laughs> decade of your life or a grandfather or an uncle, and you're sitting there without one and you can like kind of really feel like, oh, I really wish that someone like this was in yeah. my life. Then I, I understand that, uh, 
because that is the type of character that he portrayed on television. Like, and you know, to your point, I don't feel that way about like Eddie Murphy. Like, like there's no, exactly. there's not a role that Eddie Murphy did where I'm like, like, oh, oh my man, God, yeah. my, my funny, that funny guy. No, he's just like a funny guy. He's not like, like Hercules. Hercules never had me feeling like that. No, no, yeah. There's a lot of celebrities who, you know, do and don't give that type of energy based off of, uh, you know, what it is they performed mm -hmm. in. You know, yeah, so, um. <laughs> I never even got a chance to answer this. What is the most important thing that I learned from my mom and dad? Um, I think for my mom, she taught me that, like, you know, you should figure out what you are passionate about. You should figure out, like, you know, where does your creativity stem from and find your passion. She said that a lot when I was a kid. I do remember hearing that. I genuinely did not really understand what it meant, but I do appreciate that she did say that. And, you know, taught me things that were of um, more culture than I probably would have had a chance to be exposed to if it wasn't for her. I know my dad wouldn't have made he, he wouldn't he wouldn't have gone out of his way to, you know, have me in art class or have us travel and stuff like that. So I definitely think that she exposed me to the idea of like like really, really kind of putting in your head, you can be whatever you want to be. Um whether that was just from her own upbringing or just like you're in a position where your parents are working hard enough where you can try whatever you want to try out. But I do remember the words like, you know, whatever you do, find what you're passionate about and try to focus on that was something that she was very adamant about. Um, and I appreciate her for that. And then uh, my dad, um, I, I guess inadvertently just kind of, learning and seeing how hard it is to I think achieve those dreams and that it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of determination that you really have to be serious about it you can't half-ass it and I think you already know this from that one time where I uh, had told you I was talking to him about uh confetti <laughs> is Everybody, everybody wants to, has to feel important everybody wants yeah. to feel special or important yeah. and that I think that also kind of ties into you talking about people approaching him and all that like they everyone wants to you know not necessarily feel fame but they want to feel they they do they or they want to i feel like some proximity to it or some maybe not even fame but recognition to be recognized to be seen to be heard validation yeah yeah and he i think in telling me that was like you know jd the reason that you're confused on set is because you've got a bunch of people who aren't doing the job you're doing, which should technically be the hardest job, or not necessarily the hardest, but the most involved. Sure. Because you're the performer of a project and you're the face of a, of a thing. Yeah. Sorry, maybe not most involved, but maybe most admired, most visible. Yeah. You know, because like grips and other people are working just as hard. That That's absolutely happening, but they're not seen. No one is seeing and appreciating the guy holding the boom mic for forever or the lighting guy or the teleprompter. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, I know what yeah. you're saying. And that's why anytime I have friends who are not doing entertainment, I'm like, why not? <laughs> like, I used to think like that when I was younger. Oh, I used to think like because I used to see my dad and I was like, his job is talking for an hour. <laughs> And I, I found that fascinating. I literally, I was like, I, I think, especially with my mom in the background being like, you know, fi yeah. find your passion. Yeah. My passion when I was younger was art, mm -hmm. but more or less, I don't even know if it was as much my passion or if it was just as what I was exposed to at a young age and became my identity at a young age. Because that's what, like me and um, my buddy Noah on um, my little interview show, you know, he talked about his thing was basketball. Mm -hmm. So he genuinely like had a through line yeah. of his friends and of stuff. friends and um, moments in life and accomplishments that went through that. But he realized after he got out of high school, oh, basketball's been my identity this entire, entire mm -hmm. time. But what happens if it doesn't work out? Mm -hmm. Like what? What's next? What's now? What's possible? Yeah. yeah. And then for me, art was my identity, and I enjoyed art, and I still like to draw, and I should do it more, but. It was a thing that I just had come into contact with at such a young age mm -hmm. that I was like, oh, like, you know, there, I think that's un unless unless you're a kid who ex who experiments and tries different things at, at young ages or in your teenage years, 
uh, I just was like, this is just what I do. Uh, I thought this, I thought this is just what you're supposed to do. Mm. Like whatever it is that you know you're good at, that's the thing you stick with. I, I think when I was younger, that's literally how I saw it. So when I started messing around with entertainment, obviously, you know, I'm in a different, I'm in a different uh, space because I come from a family who's doing that. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of equating like all the hard work my dad did and everything that we have like, you know, come to, I guess, achieve as a family. I think I thought to myself, why don't more people try it? And I and I I know more people do. I know there's yeah, plenty of. But people. as a kid, you're like, why doesn't everybody do this? Just get up there and talk for an hour, or just or try yeah. to be an entertainer. Yeah, but you it, don't know all the nuances as a kid of like what it's actually like. What it's actually like, but even to this day, like I will be honest, like you know, if I want to go off and you know, me, we, me and you ride into the sunset and do completely different things with our lives at mm -hmm. one point, sure. But now that I've built up you know, the career that I have built up, it's, I think I looked at it like, oh, it's one of the most, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. Depending on what you're doing. Because there's different aspects of entertainment. It's not like there's just one through Yeah, because I'm like, there's so much nuance. There's so much nuance. It's so subjective. It's so objective. There's so many different things. But <laughs> I still looked at like people, I, I think when I was like in my teens to my 20s, I couldn't wrap my head around how some people were like, well, I mean, it's not about wrapping my head around it because everybody's different. It's more about, I think I was looking at a lot of friends and people who were coming up with me. And I'm like, well, why don't you try some different stuff? You don't have to try entertainment. Mm -hmm. But it was like, you, again, you never know. Some people could be scared. They could be scared of and wanting to try. Mental health stuff. Mental health. things, their household that they grew up in. Yeah. Self-limiting beliefs, self-worth issues, all those kind of things. Yeah, but all, you don't know that in your 20s. I don't know any of that. But I also said to myself, like what's the worst that can happen? Like, the worst thing is that you don't do it anymore. Okay, we going down conspiracy theory thing right now? I, no. I don't know. I don't know what you were looking at. Sorry. No, it just, I, it's really, it is. I mean, there are terrible things that happen in the entertainment there industry, are, there, no, no, Like, I'm not saying there aren't. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I think, like, again, because we grew up in two, like, very d different socioeconomic backgrounds. So, like, Hearing you say that, I understand the place that it comes from. And that's where I, you know, and I've always said, like, I give your mom and your both your parents credit for that because to have, in, in my very humble opinion, and obviously it's extremely biased and myopic and based from my experience, but hearing you say that is really interesting because one, as you being a black man and, and at the time being a young black boy, to have that in your mind is so incredible and so powerful and such a testament of like, you know, they were flawed people, but they they put that into you. So you and so that's you, not normal for a lot of people. No. And and I think the word that came to mind in my head was like, what an what an honor and a privilege to mm -hmm. be able to exist in that space as as a as a black man right and to be able to like in your 20s at 18 whenever whenever to just that is your mindset and that is how you're viewing the world like that is it's incredibly powerful yeah i think i'm i'm probably am not specifying it enough is like i think people who were like in my circles and or knew me like that or around me or maybe came ar up around similar stuff because yeah it, it's very much a a product of oh this is what i've seen all my life so i yeah. know so i know that it's possible and i think other people who i knew that were around that with me i think i look at some of them like we might as well, why don't we all fuck around and find out but it's different because mm -hmm. i'm on ground zero with it in my household well you're you okay i'll say it like this when you this is what what triggered it it just came to my head when you said what's the worst that can happen you don't know what the worst looks like mm -hmm. because you started out at the penthouse floor for for just as an, an analogy right and some people are starting off like at something i had to learn in my 20s and now i really figure like i got it sorted in my 30s it's like everybody did not start at the same place like mm -hmm. anyways that's not the point um so 
that's what I think is the powerful thing. Yes, you're thinking like, you know, try it. Just let's see what happens. But the fact that you really don't have a concept of what the worst actually looks like, like that is so incredible because you can make you can say that statement and maybe you do have some fear. I'm just just how I'm experiencing it is you being able to say that with like the fullness of your chest and being like, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Like whatever. And not at any point really having something haunting you or going back in your mind of like, Oh shit. Like I actually do know how bad it could be. And I also think that's a testament to a lot of the success that you've had in like, cause you know, I've known you for going on 14 years. Right. Um, is because it's something that you haven't experienced, it's not something that your mind can conceptualize. So it's not something that I ever think is something you even think is a real option. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, yeah. it's never like, oh, what if I fail? You don't know what that looks like in totality as a whole, as it affects like where you live, where you eat, where you sleep, or like it doesn't create any type of of necessary in, like insecurity about necessities in your life. And so you have this really beautiful vantage point where you're able to just be like, I can fuck around. And every time I've tried to find out it works, I don't know what it looks like to not work. So fuck it. I'm going to keep going. Like that is so incredible to me. I feel like that was my version of nepotism. Like, yeah, I, cause yeah. I try, I try, okay. I try to, exp okay. well, I tried to explain that to some friends the other night at the comedy store and I told them, like, yeah, I was like, you know, if somebody wants to label me a Nepo baby, you can. Because I definitely had access to things that most kids didn't. And still do. And still do. Yeah, I didn't forget. <laughs> so I, I was like, I was like, hey, damn, you got me. Okay, shit. I was like, I was like it didn't stop. I like, didn't say, we can't. I never said it did. I was like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, mm. oh, yeah, that was mm. that was then. This mm. was now. Like, <laughs> you had to just let me know. Hmm? I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like are you a lily rose depp nepo baby or are you a kardashian nepo baby no but are there things that and in people and opportunities and different things that you have access to and and whatever yeah i'm aware <laughs> i'm not and i know i'm not saying you're not no, I'm not no. i'm not trying to say well that my at thing all. is like i don't want people thinking that i'm not aware i'm like no i mean it's it first off it's a leg up that both parents are in the house like you know what i mean Hello, hell, whoop, yeah. whoop, 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 whoop. amen <laughs> i'm just saying amen. I'm not crazy. Like I knew I, I no, no, I know. I, I know that there's a, it's a leg up that both of my parents are in the house. It's a leg up that one of them is chase or excuse me, that both of them are chasing their dreams and one of them ends up being successful. Is that mean? No, but my that, mom's a successful no, mom and she yeah, was, and she no, was a Ford no, no, model no, no, and all no, that no, stuff. She no, had a lot no, going no, on. No, I'm not trying shit on her. No, no, you, I know you weren't. It was just like, it's a nice ring. I guess I didn't. It was it, unintentional. Yeah. You weren't trying to be mean, but it was like. Listen, we know who to. We can call Spade Spade. I, I ain't the star of the family. I'm aware of that. But let's also, but let's also be clear that woman, because I again, I give credit where credit is due. She was a full time mom. She was still doing art. She was still pursuing things that she liked to do. John obviously his career popped at that time so obviously that the focus has got to be there because it's bringing in opportunity for the kids and the family and everything like that so to be clear no one is saying that being a stay-at-home mom is not a full-time job it absolutely is being a mother in general is a thankless fucking job so I just as a woman mm -hmm. I want to say that because that is really hard especially when it's not as if your dad was coming home at like you know five at five in the evening and it's this cookie cutter life it's like he's got he's on the road he's you know doing fucking shows he's he's on a tv show it's all this pomp and circumstance while raising two kids that's hard and she's picking up the slack because he's you know mr fancy man so i just i just want to give her her flowers for that yeah. because it's it's a very difficult thing to do no, for sure. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I have no idea where I was at before you started talking <laughs> just now. Nepo baby. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nepo baby. <laughs> yeah, listen. <laughs> Google Gaga. Nigga, I don't know what to tell you. No, I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm hyper aware, even just from the way that you said it was beautiful, that that's how my mind thought. Yeah. 
Yes, I, I've yes, I've, I've never seen a version of Rock Bottom. I've, I don't know. I don't know what that looks like. I can't act like I do. I feel like I've I've never and I've never even seen it without what I think a safety net looks like. Mm-hmm. So for sure. So mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not going to act like mm-hmm. I'm not going to act like that's not real. Mm-hmm. And now as an adult, I'm at a grown I'm at, at a big grown age where I have access to certain people, certain places. I've made strides in my own career. What, what places? Places? Not like you mean like going out of the country? No, I mean like what? you got a Soho House membership. I don't know about what you're talking about. A Soho? No. <laughs> Are you messing with me? Yeah, you making jokes? Saying, no, oh. but you were like, you were you like, cut me off mid thought with that, and I'm like I'm not sorry. realizing what's happening. No, but when you said places, I was like, wait, what places? I think I was just naming nouns, person, oh, place, and okay. things. <laughs> I got excited. I'm like, wait, like what? No, no. I, I what mean, are we like? Did I forget something. Even having the access to try different things yes. at a young age, which is something that I'm aware that that's not what everyone's even able to do. I think when I was a kid going to like elementary school specifically i remember thinking like oh you're like i didn't i couldn't really i think wrap my head around the idea of like oh my dad's the only dad on tv i couldn't i like i because i think it's because i think it's because yeah i mean you're a kid but so, but yes. not it wasn't even just tv i think i thought oh everyone's parents are doing cool shit that's what i thought what well, yeah it, it as didn't, a kid that it, makes sense it didn't have to be acting it didn't have yeah. to be tv i i remember like one of my friends i think one of my friend's dad was like a musician and then some other Another one was like a producer and then other and then some others. Um, I remember one of them worked in like tech or whatever. But I was just like, oh, everybody's dads are cool. I'm a child. No, obviously. I know. I it's, it's just it's so sweet and endearing. That's why I'm like, yeah, laughing. no, because I'm like, that's that's fuck. I mean, you also thought you could fly in like second grade. It's also very L.A. I'm from L.A. Yeah. I'm not going to like I'm not from L.A. <laughs> you are. There's de- and it's like and like more like L.A. Proper. proper like this is like you know but between- well, valley because people la proper would argue they get real weird about their city no yeah but i'm just saying i'm saying in the sense of like you yeah, know no. the district of los angeles where and what la is known for what la is known you know for, yeah i'm like, growing up like, in la passively seeing someone pursue what la is about sure and also not being really swayed by celebrity because I'm around someone who is randomly putting me in front of celebrities every once in a while. Also, in Jay-Z video, yeah, listen, I was <laughs> yo, <laughs> me and Paul were in a Jay Z video at a, at too young of an age Way to be anywhere near too there, young. but yeah, That's and, so cute. And even just going to the mall and you randomly see celebrities that you see on TV because that's just oh, their mall. I didn't think about you. Don't that think part. like people who come here. I'm like, oh, that person's not special. And the, like I you used to live see in the them neighborhood as a, with all. I d- yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, yeah. I would see you. You you go. You walk. You know, depending on where you live sure. specifically, but. You know, you walk around certain areas, you go to certain malls that are the only mall at the time. Yeah. You you might see someone there with an entourage or yeah. whatever, but it's like, oh, yeah, oh, Will Smith shops at my mall or right. Jack Nicholson shops here or oh, whoever. Spooky. You know, like the Beverly, yeah. like the Beverly Center was notorious for that. Yeah. Oh, God, R.I.P. Like, to that bar at the bottom of the escalator. You remember that? They got did rid you, of that. Did you ever go to that bar? Yeah, when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. my God. No, as an adult, did you ever go back for you and have a drink there? Yeah, once or twice. Oh, my God. They got rid of it. I was so sad. It was amazing. I remember like, what, sorry, this isn't about me. Yeah, no, tell me more, on. Golden sorry, Girl. No. <laughs> <laughs> the way. Oh, my God. Did you hear about the bar? The bar's gone. I can't believe you started turning it. <laughs> Moving on back to what you were saying. This is not about me. No, I did no, not you, mean to take no, the conversation. No, I, I, I didn't mind. No, I, I, we used to, we used to, because me and Noah, we used to go to school at a school in Hollywood down the street from there. But Beverly Center was like where we went on lunch breaks. Like we would like just take the bus down the street to the Beverly Center. Or if we got off a class early, like we would go out of school and just go shop at the like I would not like anybody have big money, but we could go hang out at the Beverly Center. That's just normal. Me and Noah talked about that on on I have an interview podcast with my with that it's on Patreon. If you all ever want to go check it out. I'm not sure what I'm what's currently called the archives. I might change the name, but I interviewed a friend of mine who I went to high school with and he's from the West Side. So he gets yeah. that. But, you know, I'm. It, that was just and also our school was so small there wasn't like a lot of anything to do it was a parking lot and a basketball court and yeah. a building that's it so as soon as class is over if you're old enough to leave i think whatever like you can literally go get on the bus and go home 
or it's like, yo, y'all want to go to the mall for a few hours and just hang out at like LA's premier mall, like Beverly Center. Like that's just where we would go. Let's go get lunch. That's just, it's very much clueless. It's very much. Yeah. yeah it's very much clueless. It's very. Yeah. Gag, yeah. gag the house boots down, honey. I'm like, yeah. what do you mean? What the fuck do you mean? Like, oh, hi. I'm like, how old were you? 14. I'm 14. Let me just skedaddle after school and go pass by Escada. As a fashion girl, I'm sorry, I'm having a stroke. <laughs> also, as someone like, I don't know, you guys watching this, uh, I've touched on it before, but JD and I come from very different socioeconomic backgrounds. So, uh, Malls like that, like I remember when I first started coming to LA in my 20s when I was a party girl, um, the Beverly Center was like, mm -hmm. yeah, like, it's always had that, you know, like it, it was all and I, you know, didn't come from means I grew up around it, but you know, we were and anyways, that's not the point, but so like again just like that juxtaposition of like yeah it was somewhere we went after school and like we just got food and walked around and whatever and i'm like i remember getting dressed up to go to the beverly center yeah. because i didn't want to look like the broke friend because my friends had money and they lived in la or whatever and like i remember the first time i went to the beverly center i was like you would have thought i was it i mean it's also like a fashion girly but like i was just in awe even though you know in south orange county we had south coast plaza and that place is just a fucking labyrinth but like the beverly center is on like shows and yeah you know it's it's the beverly it's, center it's, you know yeah, and so you're like i just you know cruise down there and got a corn dog with my niggas it's like <laughs> what <laughs> hit the panda express in at the top floor oh my God. at the in the food court oh that was God. just what That's it was amazing. yeah no you know it's wild i think That's looking crazy. I mean, it's interesting, though. It's crazy from the outside looking in when you are a product of someone who's sure, trying to make totally it out normal. here. Because yeah. I because I can have this conversation with probably Gabe. Sp no, specifically, oh. specifically like children of entertainers. Now, if, sure. I'm, if I'm thinking I may, I think I wrote a joke where I'm like, yeah, there's an, a little we have like an Illuminati group. Like it's a joke, obviously. <laughs> But Tears. no, very much a joke. Like we but all that's funny. Like more or less, we all know each other. It Like there is. Not it, depending on your class, I would say. Well, because wasn't it like you told me like you used to hang hang out or play basketball with like George Lopez's kids and like you so, and yeah, O'Shea like, played video games together. So that, and... yeah, that's the thing. You're like you're you got to wrap your head around the fact that if your parent did participate in entertainment, specifically acting, or enter actually entertainment of in, any yeah. facet, because my dad knew rappers, he knew musicians, they loved him, he knew singers, he opened up for the Temptations when he was younger. Like that was there's a photo of it. There's plenty of them. Yeah, oh. that's where that's I think that's where the episode of the excuse me the episode of the Wayne's Brothers yeah. the, te the Temp Tones is a joke from. Oh um, but what's that song? What's that sound that goes through the, the night? night. Something th when I'm holding you tight, bang bang bang. Yeah, thank you. mind you, that I got you got to give credit to him where that dude was. First off, a scene stealer in the well, sense that you better be careful. That's this, an Aquarius. Listen, he, that's, and John is an Aquarius down. And he's an OG Detroit player who has all this knowledge of Detroit that he brought to him to, with to Hollywood mm -hmm. that just ended up becoming catchphrases. Because I have friends who like my friends who are like I have like a like a maybe a, a quad group of Detroit comics who all came out here who I know right now. Oh, OK. And they are all like, oh, bro, you don't realize like your dad's God in Detroit. Yeah. No. In the sense yeah. of an entertainer to come yes. out of it outside of like yes. Eminem, Big Sean, specifically yes. in comedy. Yes. They were like there wasn't anybody else who came out and like pop like that. Didn't I tell you like how my Facebook blew the fuck up from like. Family members I knew and family members I didn't know. After our marriage announcement? Yeah. Well, when I got <laughs> engaged and then once we got married, it was like, you know, whatever. Um, because my mom's side of the family, there a lot of them live in Detroit. Like my uncle Dale one time, because like he knew obviously I got married or whatever. And he texts me a photo of him and John, your dad at the comedy club because he came up <laughs> and was like oh yo yo uh your son is is marrying or married to my my because he's like my mom's stepbrother yeah so like he's not seen he's come to us really my uncle but you know what i mean yeah um but he's come to a live show yeah and There's, then so, yeah. and then your dad came home and we went to the house and he was like 
So Pila, you got people, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, oh, did he go to a Detroit show and then come home? When your dad, your dad played Detroit, uh, or no, Cleveland? Oh, Cleveland. Cleveland or Detroit? One of the we two. have people in both. Yeah, and same. That's where mm-hmm. I, I'm from, Cleveland. Like my family, like there's we rolling deep in those streets, especially on my mama's side, especially in Detroit. Yeah, and so he, your dad was just like, yeah. Somebody came and was asking me about you, yo, yo, uncle. And I was just like, oh, yeah, my uncle Dan. He was like, I didn't know you had people. I was like, nigga, I told you I'm from there. What do you I mean? mean? <laughs> but, no, he did. But then he remembered um, because him and my mom were on the phone one time when they were talking about Belle Isle, which is like right. a, a place people go to or whatever. But, yeah, no, he is He like it. It made me like like if he was Thanos, I was with the green girl. Uh, Gamora. Th- yes. Yeah. Very, very much so. They were like, oh, my God, tell him. I said, bitch, I don't even know who you are. I'm not telling him nothing, but thanks. Yeah. Like, he is, he really is a god. I would never want to, like, be with him in Detroit because that would, it would be, JD would be fucking crazy. Yeah, and not, I mean, obviously not to make this any type of negative stereotype to religion, but I was just going to say, he's, no, he's very popular, obviously, there because that's his hometown. But then, you know, at the end of the day, I get messages every single day yeah. from people who, if they grew up with him, he there he's very important to their life. Very much so. He's very yeah. he's so important that anytime anyone does anything related to him, uh, let me tag JD Witherspoon. Yeah, I know. Because I'm sure JD Witherspoon wants to think about his Be dead, bombarded with this. dead dad today. <laughs> people don't don't have that. They don't they don't have the uh they lack the self awareness to yeah. know to know like, you know, that some days I just want to live my life. Hello. But, but Hello. I do appreciate it nonetheless. Yes. And um, I was going to say to finish off what <laughs> I learned from my dad, I learned about uh, everyone wants to feel important. The mm. stuff I mentioned about my mom. And also, if you're feeling ill, take a boo-boo. Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And if you have the hiccups, drink water through a paper towel. I didn't learn towel. that from him, I don't think. Oh, I thought that was from I don't him. know who I learned that from. That was just oh. a trick that someone showed me at a young age. Oh. I think it was a Loretta. I think Loretta showed me Oh, that. really? I think okay. I want to... I, I don't know why I thought that I got to text her. That's my aunt. I got to <laughs> ask her, because like for those who don't know, if you have hiccups, it's also like an it old works. school... It's an old school trick. You it just works. You put a paper towel over a glass of water, and then you drink through the paper towel. And it usually gets rid of hiccups. I don't yeah. know why. Maybe it defu- maybe it pulls air out. I have no idea. My mom was over here talking about take a tablespoon of sugar. It oh, works, maybe but like one. also like sugar high. Yeah, yeah. But no, my dad will always do the joke about well, JD, something wrong with you. And I'm like, I'm like, what do you, you mean? Take and I was like, I was like, oh, my stomach, or not even it could be anything. Anything. It wouldn't I matter. A, it would I not have matter. A headache. My take eye hurts. My leg hurts. Take a boo boo. I have to <laughs> I my my nose is stuffy. <laughs> take a boo boo like it was any- anything it he was did anything. not care anything he was like well brother did you did you take a shit yeah. <laughs> i'm like what this has nothing to do with that um, <laughs> all that noise <laughs> that's the one that's oh, the one God, thing i miss those little grumbling well that's the one thing that anytime me. anybody asks me about impressions i'm like listen i bet you know i love i love all the ones i do see they're fun but i'm just like it one you guys are doing a really fun version of a character he's doing not the person and i was like but if we were to sit down and just have a conversation and i'm not trying to compete more just like y'all don't have things the that nuance. you don't have nuances no, that i have can't, no you don't know how he breathed no you don't know how he would just his size oh my god the you know certain certain ways words were pronounced also I can't lie. A part of my voice does it accidentally sometimes. Yeah, it does. It does it a lot. I had uh, used to freak me the fuck out. It depends on how my day is going. And if you just pitch my voice down, it is his voice, (laughs) which is creepy. Because sometimes I have to do voiceover auditions to play fathers on cartoons. And when I'm doing them, I try not to sound like him. Yeah. And then sometimes I either end up sounding very like a like a black exploitation character like mm-hmm. a black dynamite or something oh my god yeah love that movie and then I know, uh, oh i know <laughs> first, i know first movie i ever showed my way no oh 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 no 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 don't let that be the the first that you talk about this was the first movie that he showed me on our first date date and it was the first set of titties i ever saw on a fucking date i didn't realize i forgot the first scene had titties in it i was just like it's a funny movie let's watch it yeah. Also, that was part two of the date. You could we could have wrapped it up after going bowling, but you, you were, asked you, me, and you, you said yes. Yeah, but you asked me, <laughs> so don't make it seem like I like 
Well, I you, didn't make it seem like I, didn't, I wasn't trying to. At least. Thank you. Because no. I'm like, you asked me. And you, you were trying to smooch me and be like, you should come back. No, you we can didn't just say no. We can just no because you were cute. Mm. <laughs> the fuck? See, these are the little uh, gay ass nuances I have on stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I forgot. We probably cut that part out. My bad. Yeah. Because I was talking. We were talking I, about that. No, yeah. no. Because I've had people say. And I do, and you know, I maybe you be it's, down for the girls. Maybe it's because I be down for the girls. But you know what? It's it's so funny because like I have told you before, like with certain words, like like that I've said, and you'll like repeat them, and I'll be like, "Don't say that," and you'll be like, "Why?" And I'll be like, "Because someone's gonna think you're gay." Like if you uh, run around, because there was something we were doing. There was something we were talking about one time, and I said something something to trade. And you were like, oh, yeah, the trade. And I was like, do not, do not, do not run around saying that. Don't, don't JD, you're never going to beat the allegations. Oh. You're never. Because, <laughs> and then I said something about being verse. And you would like made a joke about it. And I was like, JD, shut. Like, I'm some, sorry. Everything. I'm trying to learn about other things. That's fine. But just keep it out the comedy because I'm telling you. if, if So it, I don't talk about it in the comedy. No. no, but I'm just, I would tell you in those moments because I'm like, I don't want you to go up there and just as you're shooting the shit with people doing crowd work, you're like, oh, yeah, because, you know, my <laughs> wife said that's the trade. And then, you know, does that mean you're verse? Because they're going to be like, oh, I so don't you, think I would you talk on the down low, nigga, like, OK. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about topics I don't know. I get what you're saying. Though. Uh, yeah, but sometimes you let things slip out. Sometimes <laughs> you get to yapping <laughs> and shit just flies out. I just yeah, please, <laughs> please, you'll never beat those allegations with me because I have examples. OK, I would have to be more well versed in what we're even talking about. And I put a D at That's the end of that. True. Just That's not true. I think. Well, OK, not to get allegations to 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 understand whatever. I guess I'm just trying to have fun and people are taking and, and it too serious. No, no, and that's the thing that that right there is what I'm talking about. You're just trying to have fun. And so you'll just like say something and I'll be like, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, verse means you can do top or bottom and trade means that you fuck around and you find out on the low. That's okay. Like you to trade. I've like, never really used those words ever, but I hear, I know I, I hear you. Because I told you then you need to forget these words wherever. Like, do I've told you, I was like, do not. I told you at the For time, I was like, do not use these words. <laughs> They're going to think that you're gay. And you were like, really? And I'm like, Shady, please fucking listen to me. Because those are like, because I, you know, I'm down for the dolls and the queens and the gays and the days. So I know some of those lingo, the lingo, especially from being in the dance world and, and friends like that. Right. So I will say them because if I say verse or trade, those th that is that is vernacular that is specific to men that are gay or people that identify as men that are queer. So as a woman that the lesbians, the lesbies, we love you. They don't use that term so yeah. you as a straight man talk about trade or verse but i've never said those words i know JD. you're just giving I me a heads aware. up where i gave you a heads up then okay so what have i done since then i'm not saying you've done anything since then i'm just saying i have said words like that oh, now these words are stuck you've done head. the repeating thing and then i've been like hey don't say that and you're like why and i you be like why and i'd be like because the seinfeld because Ooh. jd like it's not gonna go the way you think got it okay i got it i'm done we're done not gonna do it never will haven't started not planning on it but what i will say is sometimes in my jokes <laughs> i will do like some of this i'll do like a this oh yeah you do you do that i do this and i do a hmm i, I do that <laughs> i do that sometimes Cause I think I did. I think I did that in a. I watched a clip of me doing stand up in the last week or so, and I was doing it, and I thought it was funny. It's just funny. I don't know, mm -hmm. and it's and I like it because. And I, it is funny to be clear. It's funny, and I mean, if if someone in the crowd wants to like suss me out, and be like, hmm. they can, but I mean, I'll just say no. What I'm saying, like, if that's what if that's where their mind goes based off of how I behave, I can't control that. Mm -hmm. What do you? I don't understand what you're doing now. You're judging me. No, I'm not judging you. What is this? They can suss that out for them motherfucking selves. That's what I'm saying. It's staying away from you. No, I know. I'm saying like if someone's in the crowd, I, I can't. I can't help if someone in the crowd is thinking he behaves. Sure, but they see behaves, them rings, so they know sweet. <laughs> whether whether you married to a can of paint or to a girl or a broom, either way, you got two rings on your finger. They can mind their little motherfucking business as they should. Yeah, Hello. Yeah. No, that's just funny to me. Unless they want to meet me in a different way. My dad always uh, with the. 
Yo, brother, you uh, you got a little sugar in your boots. <laughs> I was like, yo, bro, chill out. <laughs> he said that to you as a kid. No, he didn't say it to oh, me. He, I was like, that's Damn. that's you know, that yeah. that's a old a school that's, a, that's a nice old school way of uh not saying a derogatory term about yes. gay people. Um got a little sugar. We talked way too long on did that we? one question. Did we? We did, and I think we should I don't know. I don't think we should ask any more. We should do one maybe an episode so that sure. so that we can keep things Ooh. cohesive because it'll be another I don't know, because it'll be another off the top of my head. Oh, I mean, yeah, I have some stories. I was like, you don't know the bravest thing you've ever done? Off the top of my head, I want to say now, thinking about when I was trying to rush you out of that club, because we th- I thought I was going to get shot up. That's hilarious. That was brave. <laughs> but also... Uh, yeah, no, you're right. We, can, we don't have to make this like a 25-hour episode. I think it's just I'm realizing you can do that. I'm loquacious. No, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I I think we answered one, and I would love for people to send us some more yeah. questions for no, the no, future. No, if sure. you want to, we could do another. No, I, no, 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 no. I, I'm I'm adding to the timer I did on top of what we did before. Oh yeah, we're good. So we're we'll probably we'll probably be at like an hour thirty. Yeah, that's perfect. I for I after having a few interviews with friends, I'm realizing, yeah. oh, if you get caught up in just yeah. like going down memory lane, that motherfucker will end up being three hours. Okay. Plus, so, see how that happened with you. It's not you? a bad thing, though. No, no, I know. That's how you do with your friends, yeah. And you wonder how, why or how what we talk about when I stay on the phone for four hours. N- I also wonder. Tea. Never mind. I was about to say something that you would have been eh, not go mad. Ahead, no, go ahead, it, go wouldn't, ahead, it wouldn't affect me. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, yes, I can wrap my head around the fact that you all stay on the phone for four hours. Also, that's my producer brain going off thinking. It'd be fun if you guys recorded it. Not to say you have to. We couldn't. No, no. You can't and you sh- and you shouldn't unless you want to. I'm saying. No, we really couldn't. The shit we talk about like this to the grave. Are you talking about you and like everyone? Any of my girlfriends. If we're talking that long, oh. 90% of what the fuck we're talking about is redacted. Yeah, no. I'm thinking about it from the pers- <laughs> I, I'm I'm talking from a, pr- a producer perspective of I give you all topics to speak on and then go for it. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Okay. Not your own personal stuff. No, okay. no, no. I was like, JD. No, I'm saying if you have such a great rapport with your friends that have conversations like, hey, here's three here's three uh, bullet points. Have at it. And then next thing you know, five hours goes by. 5 a.m. girls. I still think I that's a great. I think it's a great. Renee. I think it's a great name. Um, yeah. I hope you all enjoyed listening to us this week. Yeah. If you did, we appreciate you. Please. Even if you didn't, we appreciate you. If you didn't, we appreciate you. Touch grass. Sorry. <laughs> Could you do us a favor and leave us some reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify? That would help us a lot. Um, Also, check us out on TikTok, Instagram. You can go to my Patreon, which is just lumped in with everything that we're doing. And also here on YouTube, this is where we record this thing and post it. Would love some beautiful comments and leave us a voicemail. Please, please. I love the voicemails so much. I don't much. think we have any. I don't know. Last time I checked, we didn't. They are, but, I just think they're so fun and interactive. They are fun. They are interactive. We've got, if, if you want to be interactive with us, we would love for you to leave us a voicemail asking maybe a question for the next episode. And then that way we can chat to you, chat with you about maybe whatever you're asking. Uh, it's, it's just a call to action that we have to keep doing every episode. And with that, I appreciate y'all. She appreciates y'all. We appreciate y'all. Don't we- you speak for me. She appreciates y'all. Ooh, excuse, are you deaf? She doesn't appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all, but I'm a woman and I can say it on my own. Hello. Then say it. Say it. <laughs> All right. Well, there it is. All right. Cool. <laughs> It's so incredible how safe you feel just because a camera's on. Ah, what do you mean? <laughs> I think that's beautiful and endearing. It is. Mm-hmm. And obviously, my jokes aren't working today. <laughs> so. Oh, they're working. Your nerves. <laughs> they're working. <laughs> they're working. Don't say anything you don't feel comfortable with, honey. You should take your own advice. I will. <laughs> All right. Awkward ending. See y'all later. Have a nice. No, I don't know. What, what, what? Is there anything else to say? You guys are the best. Thanks for hanging out.
Uh oh, I was out of frame and it's not focused. It's not focused. Yeah, you loosen that mic up too. I, it okay for the record. It's always like this. Oh, you can. All you want to. <laughs> It's always like that. The fuck? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. I think we're done. La- later. See you next week. Bye. Send us questions. Put comments and questions in the comments if you want something to answer. I have no idea. We just talking. We just talking. We just yapping. I want to make a. I was thinking about making a podcast called Yapping. That's a good name. Yeah. That's a good name. Yeah. Also, our backgrounds changed. I'm going to have to fix that later. All right. I don't know. I had to bring it up. I'm sorry. It was a bad, bad decision. I probably cut by now. Did I? I don't know. Look at this big ass foot. Look at that thing. Ugh, dirty Wait, ass. Hold on. Tiny feet. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you have big ass feet. Yeah, it looks crazy, right? Because I'm a I'm a men's seven, so I'm almost half your shoe size. Hmm. Because you're a thirteen. Yeah. Wait. What? Yeah, I'm a men's seven and a women's eight and a half. Got it. Cool. Hmm. All right, y'all. See you next week or Bye. or the week after. Love you. Bye. Thank you.